This pipe here is the diversion pipe that takes the high flows out of John Matthews Creek so they can't do any damage and brings them down to a safe spot to discharge them back to the creek system. So this whole rock construction you see around you is the energy dissipation pool that allows all that high energy flow coming out of the pipe to spread out and slow down without doing any damage to the creek. And your company won an award for this project. Can you tell us a little bit about what made this so unique? Well, this project was unique just in terms of the blending of all the different features. Uh, to manage the high flows, as I said, we have this high flow diversion pipe. But what's a bit unusual is we actually installed it below what would become the restored creek bed that is all naturalized. In most cases, when you have a high flow diversion, you actually take the flows somewhere else completely, like down a road or uh, in a pipe or something like that. In this case, the pipe is laid right under what became the creek bed, and then we built the naturalized restored creek channel on top of it. To keep the water in the creek channel that's supposed to be there, the base flows and minor storm flows, we actually lined the bottom of the creek bed just below the channel substrate, or the, the gravels and cobbles, with a geosynthetic clay liner, which is a watertight liner that's usually used in solid waste landfills, hazardous waste landfills, to keep leachate and things from, from leaching out that might cause harm to the environment. In this case, we're using it to keep the base flows in the creek. And tell me what would have happened in this ravine if the work had not been done to restore John Matthews Creek? Well, the creek had already done a fair amount of damage to itself and had cut a very deep, narrow uh, chasm once it had broken through the clay layer that naturally stabilized the creek bottom and it was working its way back upstream towards where the creek comes out of the uh, urban drainage network. In doing so, it was, in the long run, it was going to make the sides of the creek, the creek ravine unstable and we'd gradually see a progression of problems that in the long run could have become an issue for the adjacent property owners in terms of safety of their properties and things like that. And how hard is it to harness Mother Nature when you're doing projects like this? It's a reminder you have to be very careful because uh, you can't understand everything a creek is going to do. And uh, the power of water is quite something. This, this creek is a trickle compared to something like the Fraser River, but what it accomplished over the course of two winters once it became unstable and had broken through its own bed, where it had cut a uh, waterfall nearly 10 meters deep and was progressing upstream with that, it, it reminds you that, yeah, there's a lot of potential there for uh, creeks to do things.